Hey guys, welcome back. We are continuing our conversation about Face of Winter, the brand new 69th Warren Miller ski film. Talk about an institution. We can also just about talk about some institutions in terms of folks who have been very present on screen over the years in the Warren Miller films. And of course, we think of, of guys now who are absolutely legendary names like our pal from out in Squaw, Scott Schmidt. But that lineage continues all the way down to my next guest who has appeared in a number of Warren Miller films. She she is a part of our community here in Park City. We're always pleased to have her back on the program. This is Kaylin Richardson. Good morning, friend. Good morning, Terry. It's so great to be here. I mean, you put me up with Scott Schmidt. I don't think I am deserving, but I'll take it. Well, like I say, there's a, there is a lineage there. There is a, a line that you draw, and and I think that uh, even if it's a dotted line, we'll give you the sure. Uh, the give me dotted. the benefit of the doubt. Right, right exactly. <laughs> just a, just a, just a dash across. Yeah. But how many? is this for you? This is my seventh. Okay, my seventh seven <laughs> Warren Miller films. That's over 10%. Yeah, good point, you mathematician, you. Wow, yeah. like, really? Miss Boyson is like, I knew that kid could make it. We're we're like, wait, carry the, you're right. So, no, it's been, Congratulations, it's been amazing. Cool. When, if someone had told me back in my first film, which was Flow State, back in 2012, I believe, um, I wouldn't, wouldn't have believed them because it was such an honor just to be involved once, but to get asked back over and over again. And that's in huge part because my sponsors, Holly Hansen's been such a great partner, as has Vocal. And just being able to have that kind of family uh, within Warren Miller Entertainment, it's so much fun. Like, the world premiere was this last weekend in Portland. It's so much fun to come to Utah. Uh, I am a little bit biased because I think that the fans are so great but it really is so many people's start to winter you you meet these people that said I started going when I was a kid when Warren was still the narrator actually sitting on the side of the screen and now Johnny does a great job Johnny Mosley yeah. and it's just it's so much fun I've been doing it long enough that I actually recognize some of the faces some of the little girls that I saw the very first year that were just little you know elementary school little girls grommies. are now just little groms in middle school and it's oh it. it's so much fun that's really cool Kind of an obvious question, but in in our modern era, whether you talk about about film technology, uh, equipment technology, seven years is kind of a long time. Things have changed a lot. I, I think oftentimes back about how how things have changed in in our communications and social media. Mm -hmm. Instagram was barely a thing. Oh, there's some good shots there. Lovely. Absolutely fantastic, good stuff. Talk about what, what it's been like to be a part over, I mean, I think seven years is kind of an era. Yeah, I can, I can speak to it. It's interesting, the very first year I was in the film, we had the Phantom camera, which was 1,200 frames per second. It was cutting edge at the time, and it still holds its own, but it's not what it was. Right. And it's funny, because we, it was, that was the big sort of selling point in all these beautiful slow-mo uh, captures in that first movie. And of course, the red camera, red camera has been a mainstay for the entirety of my tenure, but at the same time, there's always new stuff that's going on, and especially in the editing. You can see between each year, they're getting more creative, they're finding different things to do but really what it comes down to is getting people stoked and it's about powder it's about the energy and even when the snow isn't exactly what you would want if the skiers are excited about being out there it really translates to the audience luckily for me in Red Mountain we had tons of powder we open up the movie or the first segment and it's just like snow everywhere stoke everywhere and it's a great kind of way to enter into face of winter and what an interesting comparison, as you say, and we see from these incredible images that you were really in a world of snow, Red Mountain. <laughs> yes. Amazing. We hit it like perfectly. I guess three weeks earlier it had rained, there was this big uh, rain cycle, and then it was almost, uh, the week before we got there is when they started getting snow and it really did not stop. So that's pretty much every, other than going to Alaska like Dash and Jim did and getting these amazing Alaskan lines, just having a pure, unadulterated POW segment is pretty much every pro, post, pro skier's uh, dream because it's the most fun. Does it make a difference, obviously, when, when you're talking about shooting, it, it's not just like going out and, and taking <laughs> no. POW laps. I mean, it's a really, really different experience than any of us uh, regular skiers are, are even able to, to conceive of. What was it like this year in terms of, of that thing of, you have to save energy, you, you, you oh. can't just go lap and, and pretend like it's just a, an amazing POW day because you have serious work to get done. 
but all that snow. It's true, it's true. There is a misconception where I've had a lot of friends and just people I meet in passing that say, you have the best job ever. It is true, but there is one caveat. They sometimes think that the ski patrols just open up the gates and we get free range. But it really, when we're at Red, they're also public there. And what ends up happening is that every little pocket of powder, you have to realize you get one shot to make it look really good. And then once it's sullied, you're done with that zone. And you don't know if it's going to snow again. The weather's always changing. So there is an element of pressure for every single shot because you want to make it as good as you can. You want the product to be as awesome, of course, uh, in a self-centered way. You want to look awesome. But also, yeah. you just want to really get people excited. So uh, I was a ski racer for many years. And it's lent itself to especially these sort of powder segments because what ends up happening is there's movie magic. And a lot of times, the, the cinematographer's right there. He throws a little snowball, so there's like, perhaps a little bit of an indent in the snow. And he said, that is the money part of the shot. I want snow in your face. I want you to be getting really dynamic right at that spot. And I've been doing it for, uh, for many years. And there's still times where I end up in the trees. I go too hard. You end up hitting something underneath the snow. So there's definitely an element of that. But it's always really fun. It's, it is definitely a team effort. Everyone involved is trying to make it as good, as quality as it can be. Yeah, in some ways the skier kind of is an extension of the camera or an extension of the of the bird or whatever mm -hmm, it is, mm -hmm. that, whatever the equipment is. Take us through mentally what it's like. You're, you're a seasoned professional and, and, as you say, in ski racing, which is really, really a, a high pressure delivery kind of, of get together totally. of, of competition. But also there's go time in this kind of, a, of an environment. Do you have lines like mainly planned out mm -hmm. when you have changing conditions? Does that affect things? I'm thinking of like kind of how maybe when you're getting ready to drop and, and you're shooting is similar to being in the start house totally. and, and, and getting ready to, mm -hmm. to race a course. I borrow from my ski career when I do Big Mountain constantly. And I think that it's the best sort of platform to get into free riding because you have to use visualization. I think that that's huge, especially when the stakes get higher. Uh, it becomes more important and more apparent. But even on a low angle pow slope, when you really want to make it look good, it's right. almost more nerve wracking because they're so close up on you. Right. Where when you're doing a shot where you're going to be that entire 100 foot screen, and it's, you're filling, your body's filling up that whole area, you know that everyone's going to be like, their hands are doing something weird, or like their skis aren't really cracking. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a little bit different. And the visualization, but even when I'm only doing three turns, or even when I'm just straight lining into one powder glory shot, I always do visualize. I always go, okay, I'm, I'm coming in, and like right as I pass that branch, you know, there's all these cues. Sure. That's when I'm going to go really hard to my left ski and just blow it up like crazy. Or when it's I, bigger I, lines. I do that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on your snowboard, you're just like, Boom! Underneath the chairlift, Terry, come on. You love that. You love that. Uh, so, for sure. And also, just with the risk assessment, much sure. like ski racing, I remember being at the top of a World Cup downhill, and you're going to be going upwards of 80 miles per hour, mm. and there's an element of risk that you have to constantly be adapting to. You get course reports, much like in when you're shooting a film. If one of my you know, fellow skiers goes down before me, especially on a slope that we have not skied yet, we'll radio up, and they'll go, oh, it's way more punchy than it looks. So sometimes you'll look at it, an untouched you slope, one thing. and you'll think it's going to be so beautiful and powder. Yeah. But there might be a wind, wind lip where they say, hey, it's great below, ab above that, but then it becomes super bulletproof. And it might look like it's beautiful powder yeah, you just you can't tell well in ski racing it's a well curated slope and you get to slip down sure, sure, so sure. that's the biggest difference where it's such an uncontrolled zone I love that aspect of it you're so I feel like you're so much more intimately connected to the mountain because the mountains in charge where when you're ski racing the contours of the mountain are certainly there but they're trying to make it an even playing field yeah yeah sure Congratulations. Thank you. It's great to see you and we're we're so pleased for you. You, oh, you it's deserve so every great. bit of it. I just pinch myself and I just feel so, so lucky to be part of a very small part of a legacy that's been going on for upwards of seventy years now that Warren Miller started. He started a whole genre of living. He absolutely did. It's great to see you, Kaylin. Thanks, Terry. Thanks so much. Hey you guys, Kaylin Richardson, one of the studs in this year's Warren Miller film from top to bottom, amazing skiers. Our pal Marcus Caston is here as well. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll chat with Marcus and find out what's new in Hop Turn world after this.